we greet you in the powerful yet precious name of Jesus Christ. It is a name that is above every name. The Bible says that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen. Amen. While you're resting on your feet, get your Bibles out. I want you to turn with me to the book of Luke. Luke's Gospel, chapter 5. I want to notice in your hearing the first 11 verses. Luke's Gospel, chapter 5. While you're turning, we want to welcome all the family and friends that may have gathered here today. We're thankful to God for the Thanksgiving season, time where we can share together the goodness of the Lord. If you have it, say amen. If you don't have it, say wait. Amen. Verse 1. One day, as Jesus was standing by the lake of Genesaret, with the people crowding around him and listening to the word of God, he saw at water's edge two boats left there by the fishermen who were washing their nets. And he got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and he asked him to put out a little from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the people from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into the deep water and let down the nets for a catch. And Simon answered, Master, we worked hard all night long and haven't caught anything, but because you say so, I will let down the nets. And when they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. So they signaled their, their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so full that they began to sink. And when Simon Peter saw this, he fell at Jesus' knees and said, Go away from me, Lord. I am a sinful man. For he and all his companions were astonished at the catch of fish they had taken. And so were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, Simon's partners. Then Jesus said to Simon, do not be afraid, for now, from now on you will catch men. So they pulled their boats up on shore and left everything to follow him. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may have your seats. I ask that you would center your hearts, your minds, your spirits. As we prepare just for a little while to share from the sermon topic, the greatest fish story ever told. The greatest fish story ever told. Our Father and our God, now that we are at this point of preaching, now that the people have gathered in your house and come in your name to worship you, I ask, Lord God, that you would enlighten your servant, that you would give me all that I might need to preach with power and clarity in this place. Let me down, Lord God, in the wellspring of your word and allow me to come up, Lord God, with a fresh cup of living water allow Lord God all of those who are thirsting to drink from this water that their internal wells will never run dry anoint me afresh O oh God empower me Lord I am but a feeble vessel who has the audacity to stand on your behalf bless me now my Savior in Jesus name Amen. The greatest fish story 
ever told. Beloved, have you ever heard a fish story? I mean a whopper of a tale where the story is so unrealistic that you cannot even believe what somebody said is supposed to be true. I mean a fish story that boggles the mind because you've gotten so caught up in the details about the fish. I can remember a time where somebody told me about a fish story and I didn't believe it. They said, man, I caught a fish this big and I caught a fish this large and this wide and man, it was a whopper. And I said, you did that all by yourself? He said, yes, I did and was proud of it because this story denotes the clarity of the enthusiasm about catching such a large fish. As you listen intently to the story, you find yourself drawn into every detail and how it unfolds. And sometimes a fish story is told to you and you are left with amazement thinking, I love them, but they must be lying. A lot of times, beloved, when God wants to tell us and give us something so big and so wide and so awesome that we don't believe it because we're so caught up in the details, we don't understand that God just wants to bless us to the point where we're running over. I don't know about you, but I want my cup to be filled and running over. See how... Do you know that something like this is possible? The way you know something like this is possible is because of your connection to God. I submit to you, beloved, that this is the way we do Jesus. As believers, we never have a mind-blowing experience with Jesus because we're too caught up in the details to have Jesus move us from story to glory. And I don't know about you in here today, but I don't care how Jesus blessed. I don't care how he does it, just as long as he keeps on making a way. And my prayer today is that for the next few moments that I was to share, I want to tell you about the greatest fish story ever told. And hopefully you'll come away amazed with the awesomeness of God. Story goes like this. One day Jesus was standing by the lake of Genesaret, also known as the Sea of Galilee. And people were around him listening to the word of God. They were listening intently. And verse 2 says that Jesus saw two boats at water's edge. And as these two boats were left there by the fishermen, the fishermen had left the boats on the shore because they were on the shore washing their nets. Here's the blessing in this moment of the story. When Jesus identifies your boat and sees that your boat has been pulled up on the shore, when he identifies your boat, he then wants to occupy your personal space. See, when he sees me and having the need to be occupied, he wants to take occupation of your boat. And a lot of times we don't get excited about Jesus occupying our boat because we don't understand what God is about to do. But you see, when your boats are on the shore, boats are meant to drift. Boats are meant to float. Boats are meant to sail. Boats are not meant to stay on the seashore and be pulled up for such a time as this. And there are a lot of us that are too scared to sail because there's deep water out there but once we get Jesus in our boat he'll take us where he wants us to go You've got to get ready for a mind-blowing experience now watch this the fishermen left their boats because they needed to wash their nets now 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 if the boats represents what God is going to do with your life then the nets represent the tool that's going to change your condition Oh, don't miss this. Don't miss this. The nets represent your mind. They represent your mind. And, and I've discovered this, that the Bible says they were washing their nets. It was necessary for them to wash their nets. Here's the reason why. Because you can't catch no fish if you got dirty nets. Oh, Lord. Y'all going to make me preach too hard here today. I know it's Thanksgiving week, but we ain't eating yet. Amen. 
come on pray with me just a minute you see 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 we got to learn to clear our mind to wash our mind to renew our minds daily in the word of God because without the net you can't catch any fish and it's not until you wash your nets it's not until you clean your nets it's not until you prepare your nets for fish that you'll never catch fish see brothers and sisters a lot of time we get bogged down with the seaweed of life we get bogged down with the dirt of life with with, with whatever is boggling and bogging and trudging your mind instead of thinking about fish a lot of times we start thinking about other stuff instead of thinking about how God can make a way we still looking at the problem instead of looking at the problem solver and instead of looking at how God can open the door we're still looking at the closed door scared to walk through it instead of looking to heaven looking to God who is the author and finisher of our faith we're looking down because we can't hold our heads up you need to learn to wash your nets